All right, welcome everybody. So today we're going to take a look at this really vintage hand drill. So these are what are known as egg beater drills because they kind of have the same design as an egg beater does with this large wheel to a small drive wheel which gives you a basically a mechanical advantage. You only have to turn for every one rotation here, it rotates many times around here. So this one right here is actually a German-made product. So you got the word Venusberg on here. And I think that that's a city in uh, eastern Germany that, would, that made a lot of these back in the late 1940s and 50s. So that's probably when this was built. It was around that time period. Some people still use these actually um, for really fine work. And so it does look pretty complete. It has the chuck and everything. It's got the handle. So at one time this said made in Germany. And it's so worn away that you can basically see the D and the E and then the M and the Y here at the end. But I've seen pictures online that has this label on there. So I think what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to do a little tiny restoration on it. It looks just like it needs a little bit of work. So this was actually a gift. Somebody gave this to me for Christmas. They saw it in a store and thought I would like it. But anytime you're doing like really extremely fine work, I've heard that these kind of hand drills can be very good for doing that. So let's go ahead and uh, see what we can get apart here and then go from there. So first thing you see here, the chuck, it's on a threaded spindle here. And when you turn it, that's actually what tightens it down. So it probably is just going to spin right off the end here if I keep going. And hopefully it stays together. So we got these two holes here, and those are probably for some type of spanner wrench to tighten down the the chuck when you get it tight enough just by hand turning. So we'll have to see if we have one that size. Yeah, you can if you kind of get at the right angle, you can see the springs. Looks like they connect each of those jaws together. So there's probably just a bore a bore in each one of those side of each one of those. Alright, next thing. We got some screws to take out. So let's see how difficult these are going to be. That wasn't too bad at all. So we got a washer and just a little little screw. It looks like that'll just slide right off. So that looks to be made out of cast iron, is my best guess. Generally from the weight of it. So let's see what else we can get off. And it looks like this handle just screws right off. That's interesting in there, they just got some wooden threads. Just like a coarse thread. So let's see if we can knock this pin out. And that's actually just a spring pin, it looks like. So now what we should be able to do is pull this gear off this shaft. Alright, so we'll see. We'll just see if this comes off easily or not. Alright, I ran into a little bit of a problem. See this little dimple right there? That actually looks like it's a spring pin. And it's driven into a blind hole. So unfortunately it doesn't look like there's any way to remove the bearing 
bearing parts in there. So I'm guessing this shaft has like a groove built into it and that spring pan is just basically riding on that groove and it's got a lot of slop in it though. So what unless that's unless I get unless I drill that out which I really don't want to. I don't know if there's any other alternative than just to let it be. So what I think I'm gonna do I'm gonna push this gear back into where it was reinstall that pin and then just basically treat this as a as an assembly and then we got a lot of rust removal to do you can see on the shaft that's all rust in there some parts aren't as bad but most of the hardware was rusted and then this handle was really really badly rusted so let's go ahead and clean these parts up and see how they look so I started to clean everything and I ran into a little problem with this guy. As you can see, that Venusberg label started to come off almost immediately. So I decided not to continue cleaning this one. I'll just leave it as is. It looks all right. I have some good pictures here. I could reconstitute this in the future if I really needed to or wanted to. But we'll just leave it like that. I was thinking about sanding these down, but I actually kind of like the... Uh, the retro feel of these these wooden handles with the red so I think I'm just gonna put a little bit of light oil on these and that should be sufficient but the other big thing it did is I got all the rust off the shaft and it was pretty rusted the discoloration here you see those are all the places where it was heavily rusted and I think it looks pretty good right now and I also de-rusted this uh, chuck pretty good it had a couple of spots on it so I think I'm just gonna reassemble this thing and kinda of call it a it's not really a real restoration it's more just a a cleaning of all the pieces just to make sure they're in good order in there and I'm kind of trying to align it so I'm just giving it a couple of taps, a bit of punch down through there to try to extend it out a little bit. So we got pretty good engagement there. This is pretty much flush now. I think that's right about where we need to be. I bought this uh, timing belt tool that fits here exactly. It looks like there's a couple of modifications we need to do so that it'll fit on here. You don't need to take out much. What I'm going to do, I'm going to try to take a file. And I'm just going to try to take off a little bit on each side. Alright, so I got that filed down at least so it could fit, giving it a profile that it could actually fit around that shaft now. So this was a pretty hard steel. I really had some trouble getting through that with the, with the files that I have. So to add some protection to that area is where I scraped away the coating. I like to use these Sharpie um, ink pens. They have an oil-based uh, ink in them. It works great for this type of stuff. That'll at least give it some kind of corrosion protection outside of some just some oil. Alright, so go ahead and let that dry. So yeah, it's a shame that that came off, but I did take some pictures of this, so if in the future I want to reconstitute that, that Venusberg label, I could, but I think for now it's, I'm just going to keep this in uh, semi-original condition. So we'll put a little bit of 3-in-1 oil up here in the main bearing. Because I don't think that there's really a ball 
a true ball bearing in there. I think it's just basically like a, a bushing. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to put some ballistol on these handles because I think I think that's all they're really going to need because I kind of like this retro reddish uh, stain to them. And putting some of this ballistol on to really bring that out. Yeah, same thing with this little piece right here. We're just gonna keep gonna keep the retro stain on there. So the reason I really didn't clean this piece off is I want to make sure I maintain that made in Germany label on there. And it's it's probably gonna come off as soon as you start cleaning this. So this is a pretty simple assembly, not much to it really. We'll just uh, pop a little oil right here, right there, and there, and there. Slide that shaft on. We'll throw a little bit of Loctite on these uh, and these screws. And then for greasing up this wheel, I'm really just going to put a tiny, just some bearing grease, just the tiniest amount on here because you don't want to really load it up too much. And you probably really don't, don't even need a bearing grease at these speeds, but it's, it makes a good uh, corrosion inhibitor because you get a lot of metal of metal going on there. And the final thing here really is just the uh, the handle. That has a wood wooden thread in there that you just screw right on. Alright so we got our drill bit in there and then we use our uh, our new tool here to tighten it. And then you really get a whole whole lot better control with these small drill bits with these little hand drills like if you're using a power drill it's so easy to snap these off as many people would attest to so that's what these little hand drills are really great for is doing very fine work all right well there you go that's a, uh, a vintage uh, german made hand drill more commonly known as the egg bitter drill. So I really didn't go all out on this restoration. I wanted to kind of make it look still pretty old. Yet get a lot of the, the rust and stuff out of it. These are really mainly towards targeted towards woodworking users for doing very fine work. So if you ever need to drill real tiny holes, they could always these could always come in handy and you can pick them up pretty cheap. And they make much more complex versions of this. You know, ones that have breastplates, ones that have uh, two handles on them, for doing bigger holes. But this is about as simple as a, of a egg beater drill as you can get. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed that, and I'll catch you guys next time.